My name is Josh Miller. I own Riverstone Kennels, and I've been training gun dogs for more than 16 years. I have field trialed, I've hunt tested, but at the end of the day, I'm a duck hunter. You might find that the duck in our Duck Dogs podcast is spelt uniquely. The UK stands for my British labs. I love my British labs. I love what they offer me, both as a part of my family and the high motor in the field. As you're going to find, I have some pretty special dogs. Follow along in our podcast series here as we talk about both in the field hunting and in the field training situations that will hopefully help you progress with your dog at home. I've been feeding my dogs Yukonuba Premium Performance Sport 3020 for well over a year and a half now, and I cannot tell you the differences that I have seen in my dogs in energy level, in health, in performance, in recovery after that performance, all around, I could not be happier with this food. I am very, very picky when it comes to the food that I put in my dogs. I treat all of my dogs as athletes and I have to feed them as such. I am beyond ecstatic with my Yukonuba food and I would highly suggest you go out there and try it with your dog. There are very few places that we as gun dog owners, handlers, trainers can go as a one-stop location to get all of our training needs. Go to gundogsupply.com and you will be blown away not only with the selection of products that they have, but their customer service is second to none. You will not be disappointed. I know the Snells personally. I hunt with them on a regular basis and I promise you, you will have a great experience going to gundogsupply.com. There are very few things that have changed the way that I hunt, but Sitka gear is one of those things. Not only am I more comfortable, but I'm more confident while I'm in the field when I have the correct attire on. I have also incorporated this into my training because again, if I'm more comfortable, I can be more focused at my task at hand, which has actually changed the way that I can communicate and work with these dogs. If you have not seen or checked out the Sika gear, it's a game changer. You got to do it. If you guys have not checked out the Lucky Duck Kennel, I highly suggest that you do that. In my opinion, it is the best kennel on the market. It is one of the very few five-star crash test rated kennels out there. Uh, it is light enough that I can move it around. My wife can move it around with ease, but it keeps my dog safe. If you have not seen it, you got to go check it out. Your dogs will thank you for doing so. What is up, everybody? Episode three here, and hopefully you've enjoyed the first couple so far. Hopefully uh, you can kind of see where we're going with this and are excited about it because I am certainly excited about it. So. Uh, as we go through this, uh, I have new, you know, new topics, new ideas. I'm reflecting on the first part of our waterfall season and trying to uh, come up with and bring you guys some cool things that have happened this year. You know, we're down at Duck Camp right now in Arkansas, and you know, we've had some cool things going on. And so I want to share some of this stuff with you. I've hunted with a lot of uh, young dogs, a lot of young dogs that either my clients are bringing in to hunt with me that I've hunted with, you know, different parties, different groups, and then with my personal dogs, uh, which at this point are for the most part pretty seasoned dogs, but I have a couple of uh, young guys that are still kind of learning, you know, the live game and what that uh, that consists of, and what I want to talk about now is this might be unpopular, and I'm okay with that, but I want you to hear me out after you hear me, you know, say what it is I'm going to say. And the more that I hunt and the more that I see these dogs in these situations, the more that I see these dogs after that first hunting season, bring them back in, you know, to either finish them or take that next step in training that following summer, the more I believe in something that I've, you know, I made it up one day, but I've kind of stuck with it because it makes sense. And I believe in red shirting your young dog. So I'm a sports guy. You'll hear a lot of sports analogies out of me, but this is one that I really, really believe in, and I'll tell you why I believe in it. There's no way to train for certain live hunting situations, specifically in a waterfowl setup, right? You cannot train 
live birds working decoys, setting in on you, uh, you know, laying in a layout with birds literally trying, you know, to sit on you. You just you can't train for some of this stuff. And and I feel like way too often we get a dog, they're a young dog, and we're so anxious to get that dog in the field that we're willing to let bad habits come up. We're willing to let mistakes be made. And our justification for it is he's a young dog. But we don't really understand those issues and how they can morph into habits and how they can be more difficult to to uh, get over. Um, some th- some that come to mind, uh, breaking, you know, in, uh, you know, before the dog is sent, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, we want these dogs to be steady, calm, quiet, until we say their name to release them. The reason we say their name is, if you're hunting with two dogs and you use the cue back, well, both dogs could go, right? Uh, we use back in our blinds. We'll get into that later. But for our marks, you know, we want, you know, if I say Brock, I just want Brock going. If I say Bud, I just want Bud going and so on. And uh, so as we go through, you know, this, I uh, mean, I just, I see too many positives out of it. Um, you know, we always like to get those young dogs in, you know, for, for bird and gun intro, get that development down, get them on the right path. But at that point, like, are they ready to hunt? Well, that's all up in for, for interpretation, right? So will, are they not gun shy? Yes. Are they good around birds? Yes. But they may not have that total control that you want, right? They may not be completely uh, developmentally. They may not be um, physically uh, you know, there, I mean, there's a lot that, that's going on. What happens is these dogs get into these situations and the screws are going to come undone. I mean, it's just the way, it, the way it is. And I'm kind of shocked how often, uh, that happens. And we get these dogs back in for training. And it's like, well, fix it. Well, it's a heck of a lot easier to just do it right the first time than try to get over bad habits because some of these bad habits, not only are they extremely difficult to break, but sometimes they they tend to uh, resurface now and then and they will become a headache for potentially a lifetime. And so when I look at, at these young dogs, when I say redshirt them, I mean, just because the dog is, you believe, you're old enough, um, physically, you know, able, mentally able uh, you know, say you have a seven month old puppy. It doesn't mean that you stick him in that field and to me and say, well, let's, let's see how this goes. Because I've seen that now up to this point, I've seen that with five different dogs and all five people had said the same thing, which is I said, Hey, I really don't think we should you know, be hunting the dog. They wanted to, at the end of the hunt, they said, I should have listened to you. Right. And it's not that, you know, the, they're great dogs, but they're just not quite ready yet. You know, so the red shirt analogy. So for those of you that are familiar with sports, you get it. For those of you who, who aren't, you take a, an incoming high school, you know, senior, college freshman, you know, he knows the game. He's very talented. He's, he wants to go play, but he's just not there yet. Whether it's, you know, just not quite physically there. He needs to, you know, learn the speed of the game. He needs... You redshirt him a year to give him another year to make sure this is key. You're ensuring that when you put him in the field, he's ready for it. That's what I kind of look at and I say, why why do we hold or why should you hold a dog back? Because I don't like flipping coins. I say that all the time during training. I don't want to just say, well, let's see if this works. I want to put in the work and know that it's going to work. I want to make sure that when my dog goes in the field, it's going to be the best, best experience he can possibly have. And that's not going to be the case if I bring him in and he's not completely ready. So uh, I'll give you the situation training-wise we see a lot. Uh, burn gun intro gets done. Again, yes, they could go hunt, but you know they're not polished, not ready. But oftentimes they do hunt. And that's where these bad habits come in, right? So now the dog wants to break. So now instead of taking a dog that is under control, and we can just you know ease into and just remind, hey, be steady until until we send you. Now that dog wants to break because he's thinking he can and he gets to. Now all of a sudden we have to fight with him and say no. Now you know whether it's you know uh, on the e collar, whether that's on the lead, whether that's what have you. Now things have to be more physical, more dominant to create that good behavior of what we're wanting, right? 
We don't have to do that. It could be uh, that, that these dogs are getting so anxious that maybe they start whining. That's a young dog being unsure of what's going on, right? And, and going, uh, what are these birds doing? Or what's going on? And, oh, last time, last time they shot, like, I get to go. And now, now my, my owner's saying I can't go. Like, there's a lot going on, right? Chill out. Let the dog chill out. We need to be putting our dogs into situations that they can go be successful in. Putting them in the field before they are ready is not setting them up for success, nor you. Okay, red shirt your young dog. Give them a whole nother year. So what happens if we don't hunt them? Okay, well, we can take that whole fall and whole winter working on obedience, working on um, you know little things. Then we can come in that next summer. We can go through what we would consider either our intermediate or intermediate and advanced program to the point that this dog is really prepared now. They have had, call it instead of you know, seven months of their life preparing for this, now they've had a year and seven months or, or two years, or whatever it is. They're ready now. They have had enough repetition. They have had enough time working on these things that this is now muscle memory. Okay, I don't break why. Well, because I've never broke before, I know I'm supposed to stay here, right? I'm calm and quiet. Why? Well, because we've, we've worked on that and this is what I do. I sit here until I'm told to go, right? There are way too many things that you can set up successfully to avoid. And I just think the more I, I see these young dogs in the field, I mean, a lot of these dogs, I know that I'm going to have to train <laughs> later on. So I sit here and I just pull my hair going, oh my gosh, this is what I'm going to have to work with this summer. But for you at home, if you're trying to set yourself up long term, I, I really believe in red shirting your young dog that first season. Make sure that, that, that their first season is one they're overly prepared for. Because if you're overly prepared, even if you fall short, you're still going to be successful. I think that's, that's a, great, uh, a great way to look at it. I know it's difficult if you only have one dog at home. I get it, right? For me, I have six dogs that I'm personally trying to hunt. Um, and that's not including, you know, my wife's dogs. So she's young at hunting, you know, she's the upland nut. I'm the waterfall nut. Um, so we have a lot of dogs we're trying to hunt. I get that it's easier for us to say that. But I also know that if you're sitting at home with one dog, you have made, let's call it a 10 to 15 year commitment. I just don't know if rushing that first year is worth having headaches going forward. I think taking your time and enjoying that first year together is more important than rushing the dog into the field and saying, hey, I just want to get him out there. I want to get him in the field. I want to get experience is what we all say, right? But negative exposure, ne negative experience you know, works against us just as well as positive experience works for us. And I just don't think that that juice is worth the squeeze from what I see more times than not. Redshirt your dog, put in that extra you know, year of training so that when you do go out in the field, you're super successful, super uh, ready, and over-prepared. Thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Leave us a review on iTunes. And a special thank you to Yukonuba because without them, we couldn't do what we do here, bringing this information to you.